Let's do something a little original, shall we? Let's take an overblown Twitter argument and actually extrapolate something interesting and valuable out of it. You think we can do it? I think we can. And before anyone says I'm wasting my time, your time is only wasted if you decide to waste it. So let's actually take a look at the tweet that started it all. We have Prissy, aka Pandawa, and she said, friendly reminder, you are allowed to block anyone for whatever reason you want, if they make you even slightly uncomfortable and you want to block them, then block them. Put your own comfort and happiness first. And at first glance, this is a pretty innocuous tweet, and I would even agree with that. I block people all the time because more often than not, the people that disagree with me are so polarized and bitter and angry that nothing I say is going to get through to them. It's not going to be a discussion, so it's much easier on my mental health to just block them. Because more often than not, arguing on Twitter is a complete and total waste of time. However, someone did pose a counterpoint that I thought was really interesting that I want to dive into. Now you'll notice some of the replies here have been hidden by the original tweet author. The only one that's still visible is this one here. I'd understand if it was blocking people who would display genuine malice or nasty behavior towards you, but considering you said even if they make you slightly uncomfortable, this sets a negative precedent and I don't think we should be this way, all due respect. And that's an interesting counterpoint because I think that speaks to the fact that a lot of the times on Twitter we kind of end up in an echo chamber. Since we never engage with opinions other than our own, we end up reinforcing all of our own biases, never challenge ourselves, and never grow mentally or emotionally because we're so wrapped up in our own spaces. I see the point he's going for, but the reason that I would disagree with that personally is because Prissy is just talking about putting your comfort and happiness first, and generally speaking, even though I, I acknowledge that echo chambers are bad, I still personally would always put my own comfort and happiness first regardless because this is twitter it's not worth it if this was a real discussion with a real person then i would 100 percent absolutely agree with maro here about how we need to get out of our comfort zone and accept other opinions but this is twitter none of this matters so i actually didn't have to go out of my way to find the full tweet because the same person who hid those tweets later screenshotted them and reposted them which honestly begs the question why she hid those tweets in the first place if she was just gonna post the screenshot that's kind of weird but let's actually take a look at his full train of thought. So the full context of what he said is, with all due respect, I disagree. If you block people liberally and frequently, and if people don't even say anything super bad, and they just said something that made you mildly uncomfortable, which they might have done by mistake, then it won't be a good look, trust me. Besides the fact that someone could have made you accidentally uncomfortable, keyword being accidentally, in my opinion, if you block someone without hearing them out first, it's just gonna make you look like an ass. I'm sorry, but doing this stuff liberally is bad in my opinion. As human beings, we should be open to discussion, hearing each other out when there's a problem or understanding, not silencing one another just because we felt mildly uncomfortable or had our feelings slightly hurt. So this is actually very interesting, and it's a totally different point than his previous point, and I actually agree with this. A lot of the time, when people upset you, they do it unintentionally, and that's not even considered considering the fact that a lot of people are neurodivergent and sometimes they will say or do things that make people uncomfortable by complete accident just because they struggle with social norms. And very often when someone says something you don't agree with, usually you can have a conversation and work out a, some kind of common ground and half the time you find out that you agree anyway, it was just like wording or word choice that people were getting tripped up on. The first example that I think of for when people say something offensive that they actually didn't intend to be offensive, you ever talk to one of your friends and she just got through with a bad breakup and she's like, I hate men. Brr. She doesn't actually literally hate every single man on earth. She's just frustrated with the way that her past boyfriends have treated her. She just didn't word it eloquently because she's venting and she's frustrated. But if you just take that one sentence out of context, out of what is probably a much larger and deeper conversation, and you could just be like, she said she hates men, she hates all men, down with her, Miss Andrew, blah, 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 blah. And this happens all the time on Twitter because as you can see here, it took him four tweets to make a point. People oftentimes don't phrase what they mean eloquently enough and it's very easy to get offended if you don't give people a chance to explain themselves. So this particular point that he's making I 100% agree with. Having a little bit of patience when you're talking to someone will go miles. Trust me. What I do find genuinely bizarre is he took this three tweet thread that he said 
quote retweeted it as an image instead of just leaving the original tweets up and said, don't be a dickhead and tell people how to run their lives and that they should put up with being uncomfortable by others. This is definitely who has gotten blocked for making others comfy. I think she means making others uncomfortable and got blocked like he got from me for making me uncomfortable just now. And honestly, this is kind of a weird take. His point is that people can make other people uncomfortable accidentally and to just have patience. Like it's genuinely bizarre to me that she saw this behavior and interpreted it as him being a dickhead. I don't think there was anything dickish about the way he phrased it. He was just providing a counterpoint. And this is my entire problem with Twitter and really just conversations on the internet in general. It's impossible to disagree with someone and have an actual conversation. It should be possible to provide a counterpoint without starting a fight. Providing a counterpoint doesn't make you a dickhead. Now this tweet she made has gotten a little bit of attention. For example, we've got this uh, Twitter user taking her point about how you're a dickhead if you disagree. Twitter users when someone has a different opinion than them. <laughs> Love this. This is pretty fucking accurate. Now there's another quote retweet that I found that I think is also interesting and worth talking about. Too bad rad here going, here we see an example of someone with 2k followers punching down at a viewer who has a different opinion than tweeting about it without realizing how devastating this could be to someone. VTubers, please don't do this. Let your viewers disagree with you and move on. So this is an interesting take that I'm not 100% sure I agree with, but I do definitely want to talk about. And that's the idea of like punching up and punching down, because personally, I'm of the opinion that if someone says something, you should always be able to disagree with them regardless of their number count. Because the idea of punching up and punching down inherently relies on the idea that some people are higher up on the hierarchy than others, and I just inherently disagree with that concept entirely. Like, overwhelmingly so. I don't really give a shit if I'm talking to the Queen of England or my neighbor. They're, they're both people, you know what I'm saying? I do still, however, think it's a very interesting opinion, and I want to know what you guys think about in the comments. What do you think about punching up versus punching down? Is it okay to call out someone who is much smaller than you are if they're saying something you don't agree with, or do you feel like it's petty to do so? Let me know what you think. And this discussion has actually gone even deeper. So apparently, Prissy took one of Maro's tweets and quote retweeted it as, quote, tweet of shame, imagine telling someone who they're allowed to block and not, and telling them that they should be uncomfortable. Which is not what he said. He didn't say that your comfort isn't important. He just said, have a little bit of patience because sometimes people misspeak. And Kite here responding to this, imagine being that petty. It's borderline harassment when you get your fans to go after someone smaller than you over a differing opinion, which you didn't have to take. And this I actually do agree with. While I disagree with the opinion that you can't call someone out if they're smaller than you, I do think that this quote retweet of shame is 100% bait to send your fans after someone. 100%. There's a way to disagree and talk about something without using your platform to funnel a bunch of hatred towards someone. I think there's a way to go about it and quote tweet of shame ain't it. Now later Prissy commented, PS adding all due respect doesn't make your message any less disrespectful. And while that's 100% true, I don't think Mara was intending to be disrespectful. It was just providing a counterpoint. Now later on, Kite updated her first tweet with this tweet. Read this whole thread, please. VTubers, please don't do this. You're free to block. You're free to have your own opinion. But when you punch down at someone to get clout, that's really petty. Just block them and move on. Which ironically enough, that was Prissy's original point, was that you should be able to just block people and move on. And then after blocking Maro, went ahead and kept mocking him after she blocked him. So she's kind of dismantled her own argument by being petty. The whole point of blocking someone, in my opinion, is to end the conversation. That's the entire reason that I personally block people. And that's the entire reason I originally disagreed with Maro, is because to block someone is to just end it. It's not worth it. No more discussion. Let's forget about it and move on. This isn't forgetting about it and moving on. This is just attacking someone and not allowing them to defend themselves. I do question whether or not this is specifically to get clout. I think it's less likely that Prissy is doing this for clout and more likely that they're just angry 
and they're venting and being disrespectful. It's unlikely that they're, they think that they're going to get famous by shaming someone, but that's just my opinion. And it definitely seems that there's plenty of people who are not taking Percy's side in this argument. Because as Mocha says right here, is it just me or is what that guy said not even bad? People really can't take anyone else's opinion nowadays. They need everyone to agree with them and it's stupid. And honestly, this is my favorite tweet in this entire conversation. Because I don't even necessarily agree with everything that Maro said, but to just be completely incapable of taking a disagreement is pretty stupid. Now, obviously, Prissy has blocked Maro because she doesn't want to hear his opinions anymore, which, fine. But I do want to hear Maro's opinions about the subject, so let's take a look at a thread that he made in response to this whole event. So it's a long thread, so I'm going to do a little bit of paraphrasing. He basically calls out Prissy for, you know, this disappointing exchange. He shows some screenshots of the conversation that we've already gone over, and this is interesting. Now, if it would have ended there with her blocking me, then it would have been fine by me. She'd have blocked me, and I would have moved on, even if I was pretty annoyed by the results. But then I discovered that she had the audacity to say this after she blocked me, and then showing the uh, the tweets where she called him a dickhead, etc., etc. And what's really interesting is, I told her that this would make her look bad, and now we're here, and she looks bad. <laughs> So in that regard, Maro was kind of right. By being completely unopen to any criticism, Maro has actually proved his original point that he made in that first tweet that when you block everyone over every little thing, you look like an asshole. So in hindsight, yeah, he was right. Percy proved his point. <laughs> I mean, as I'm reading through this thread, he's kind of pointing out how she proved his entire point because he didn't intend to make her uncomfortable, but she took offense to it, which is exactly what he said would happen. And that was exactly his point as to why this type of behavior is bad, so. He also goes on to point out this really bad take that she made, which is that, you know, don't tell someone how to run their account, which he legitimately didn't do. So I'm glad that he's pointing that out here because he didn't tell her how to run her account. He just provided a counterpoint. And before I end this discussion, I do want to highlight this here, figuratively and literally, that when you deal with people like this, you oftentimes feel like you're walking on eggshells and they treat you like garbage and you can't argue with anything they say because they refuse to listen. And those are not people that you generally want as your friends. What frustrates me about this whole back and forth and this whole drama is the fact that I feel like she started with a genuinely decent point. The original point that she made before she got bitter and retaliatory, I feel like had some value. Basically, you as a person on the internet don't have an obligation to engage with people that make you uncomfortable. And I feel like that's still true. I genuinely feel like her first point was still sound. It is still true that you should be able to put your own comfort first and that you shouldn't engage with people that exist only to make you angry. But the fact that she took a very sensible point and then took it to an extreme and got offended at the first sign of criticism, that's not it. If you really wanted to follow your own advice, when Maro disagreed with you, you would have just blocked them and moved on, but instead, you made it a spectacle. That's the problem. My final takeaway here is that if someone is making you uncomfortable, there's a a good chance that they don't intend to make you uncomfortable and sometimes a little bit of patience goes a long way but if you genuinely feel like they're being toxic just block them and move on because if at any point the conversation just turns into an argument where no one is listening to anyone and there's just this toxic back and forth nobody wins this drama was pretty long, a little bit complicated, but I hope you found something valuable. And I hope I don't have to say this, but I'm not making this video just to shit on Prissy and make them out to be a terrible person. I genuinely feel like they're probably just angry and probably going through some stuff that we don't see and she's lashing out because she thought she made a valid point and when she heard a counter argument she immediately interpreted it as hostile and disrespectful so it is less valuable to go find prissy on twitter and get in the tweets and start an argument and call her an asshole and blah 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 blah, blah and make twitter even more of a hellhole than it is that's not a valuable use of your time, and I don't encourage you to do that. What I do think that you should do is think about what we just went over and use that to inform your decisions in the future. Have patience with people, and if you're at the point where you can't be patient, block and move on. Y'all have a great day.